On open plains in New South Wales, the location of Canberra, Australia's national capital, was selected in 1909. American architect Walter Burley Griffin, who won a competition for the design of the capital city, said, we can all be interested in the Australian federal capital city because it is an opportunity for an expression of the democratic civic ideal and all that means in freedom, wealth, comfort, convenience and splendor. The Houses of Parliament were the pivot of all planning, and around them the city was designed for beauty and comfort. Principal buildings overlook the landscape from prominent hills. The official departments and offices are placed in settings of trees and flowers. community hospital, the churches, and private homes are surrounded by spacious gardens and open fields, and the shopping centres conform to the general plan. Canberra is a unique combination of the rural and the urban, the provincial and the national. By bus or car, government offices are only minutes apart, and many people walk to work through ever-changing avenues of towering trees or flowering shrubs. Nurses, clerks, planners, scientists, politicians, all work together here in the common task of service to the nation. The Department of the Interior, as landlords of nearly all property in the Capital Territory, sets the highest standard of maintenance in the land. It looks after the hedges which take the place of fences and even transplants full-grown trees where necessary in the development of the city's plan. The Yarralumla Nursery makes available free of charge a wide range of shrubs to residents who may desire to improve their gardens. In small things like these, the administrators and the people express their affection for Canberra. As an added service to its tenants, the Department of the Interior has two-way radio contact with its more important services. Electricians, road builders, plumbers, repair gangs are all in touch with a central broadcast station and urgent jobs can be handled in a matter of minutes. To protect the area, the department carries out soil conservation projects in collaboration with farm lessees. And on the Franklin and Stromlo mountains, it keeps constant watch over soft and hardwood forests, which now supply the Federal Capital Territory with 90% of the timber needed for building purposes. It has established Commonwealth Brickworks, which supply local builders with bricks as good as any in Australia. In summer, when the haze is on the hills, a million trees, eucalypts, poplars, the wattle and the elms shade the city from the sun.
has its own particular charm. But to some, autumn is most beautiful of all. For then the green leaves turn to gold, and streets are thick with a colorful carpet of fallen leaves. When winter comes and mist lies thick across the ground, snow-covered Mount Franklin attracts the winter sportsmen. Other winter sports are popular. Hockey, baseball, football, horseback riding in the crisp, clean air of winter in Canberra. Then it is spring, Canberra in her glory. A million trees and flowers splash their colour through Australia's garden city. through the seasons is the home of Australia's National Parliament, a monument to statesmen who fought for the ideal of Australian unity and nationhood. to name the capital city, one of the founders of Canberra, the Honourable King O'Malley, said, all subsequent Australian political history will concentrate its searchlight on this place. A magnetic centre of attraction to the eyes of countless generations still unborn, and forever the visible evidence of Australia's national destiny. <laughs> 